What do Adam Beckman and Mitchell Chafee think about the start of the Iowa Wild season so far? We ask them today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms at absolutely no charge. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we continue our keeping an eye on Iowa series by talking to a couple of members of the Iowa Wild squad. We talked to Adam Beckman and Mitchell Chafee on the start of the season and a few other questions mixed in as well. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And as we mentioned, we're keeping this series going, keeping an eye on Iowa. No better spot to go after talking to Ben Gislason last week than a couple of members of the team. And so we are uh, going to get you those interviews. We'll start with Adam Beckman, and then we will get you Mitchell Chafee as well. Joining us on today's episode of Locked on Wild is Adam Beckman, forward for the Iowa Wild. Adam, thank you for taking the time to join us. How's the season going so far? Yeah, it's going good. We're um, just continuing to work through some things um, every day, trying to get better and just continue to try and you know have fun. And like I said, work hard and, and get better each day. It's a younger mix this year. And so, you know, just getting the hang of, of playing together as a group, I'm sure, um, one, three, and two so far. What are some things that have been going well for the team uh, despite the overall record? Yeah, I think, you know, we've been in every single game. I think that's a big thing is that we haven't, you know, we haven't played a game and, and got, you know, beaten pretty bad and, you know, thought, you know, we weren't in the game. I think that that's a big thing. We could have won every single game we played. I think they've all been pretty tight. So um, just continue to work and and obviously adjust a little bit of things, but continue to work on what we've been doing. And, you know, I think in the long run, at some point, it's going to kind of turn around for us. Uh, you've got some more uh, speed added into the lineup here this year. How much more fun is that to uh, to have a little bit more of that speed element on the roster? Yeah, obviously, you know, we always talk about, you know, our speed and stuff like that. We're a pretty quick team, I think, like to think. Um, it's obviously fun when you're playing the game fast. I think that that's kind of the way the new game's played. It's, it's quick and it's in transition. And I think that, that goes with our group well. I think we're a pretty fast group. We're going to continue to try and, you know, try and use that speed to our advantage. Getting a chance to play under head coach Tim Army once again here this year. Uh, what are some of the things you like about his approach to the game and how he uh, kind of handles the day-to-day? -day? Yeah, I think, you know, it's obviously a pretty positive and, and happy and fun environment. I think that it's important, you know, you, you hammer out the details and obviously we're working on each detail of the game and stuff like that. And, you know, he's doing whatever he can to kind of make you prepare for the next level. And I think that just, you know, the day-to-day -day, um, energy level is awesome. And I think it's pretty uh, contagious for the group. And, um, yeah, we're just, you know, we're working here and we're going to try and, like I said, turn things around. For you as a player, uh, getting into the swing of things in a new season, are, are you a, a goal setter? Do you have anything, you know, that you try to achieve throughout the course of the season? Or is it more so just, you know, see how things go over a, a set amount of games and kind of reevaluate from there? Yeah, I think that um, obviously I think you have personal goals for yourself and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously collectively as a group, it's important that everybody has, you know, a, a, a common goal together. And I think we do. I think um, a big thing for us and myself is just to try and it's kind of in our team model, just get better every day. And I think that for me, that's kind of my focus is each day. What can I do to try and better myself and, and mm, make a difference for my personal game and the team game? And uh, like, I, like I said, each day, and I think that's the best way to do it. Obviously, there's a lot of changes that happen day to day here, but it's important that you just uh, focus on your, focus on the, the day at hand and try and get better that day. You happen to be one of the uh, the members of this Iowa Wild roster that's had a little experience at the NHL level. How much does that fuel you both in trying to get back there, but also having had a few games to where you can say, OK, this is what it takes to, uh, to play at this level to allow you to build towards that here uh, within the next couple of seasons? 
yeah, I think obviously experience is the, the best teacher. So obviously playing at that level for the, you know, the short little bit that I did, uh, you learn a lot about what you need to do to, to stay at that level. And I think that um, it's important you try and bring those things here and then just continue to work through it because, you know, the only way to get back there is doing the, the right things and doing the little things each day. And I think that, you know, that's that's the focus of our group and that's the focus of myself is just to continue to try and work and, and continue to work and, and just try and um, continue to get better and hopefully be there someday. Uh, as this, uh, this season progresses, you know, you feel like I'm sure that this group – uh, that you have currently is going to be able to do some good things and uh, and make a little bit of a playoff run. Uh, how much confidence do you have in, in the group that you've got uh, constructed right now to uh, to give this thing a go at the end of the season? Yeah, I think we have a ton of confidence in our group. I think that, like I said before, we, you know, we're competing every day and we're working hard and we're trying to find different ways to be successful. And I think that, um, you know, we got a really talented group and a good group of guys. And I think that, it's important we just continue to kind of stay on it and continue to work. And I think, you know, it's going to come together. And I think that, you know, that's kind of been the focus of our group is just to continue to play the way we've been playing, but, you know, adjust a couple of things that need adjusting, but continue to work and just try and work through it. A couple fun ones on uh, just the team overall, and then a couple fun ones to close for you. Okay. So on this roster, who is the uh, who's the jokester? Who's the prankster of this bunch? Who's the one that's kind of trying to keep the mood light? Um, I'd say like the jokester would be Hicketts. I think the like the funniest guy's play Kramer also though. He's okay. just he's always kind of got a comment or something like that. So it's pretty funny. He's <laughs> funny to read. It's funny to be around. Who is the uh, who's the one on the team that has the uh, the best style, best fashion sense? Oof. Uh, I like. There's a couple guys with some good style. I like Nick Patanz. I think he's got a cool little vibe to him. He dresses pretty slick, and I kind of like to, to see what he's wearing each day. And then uh, just on you in general, when you're not on the ice, when you're not kind of gearing up for the season, what's the best way for you to just uh, kick back and relax? Yeah, I think uh, just family time, obviously being around the family. Um, if it's Or if it's golfing with some buddies or you know, going to the lake and, and hanging up out there, I think that. That's kind of what I like to do to get away from it a little bit. Uh, any particular pregame routine, anything that, that helps get you best in the uh, the mentality of, of gearing up for a game that night? Um, not really. I think that I, I kind of have like a, a set routine that I do, but it's nothing too specific. It's just try and do the same thing each day. I think that you kind of – we're creatures of habit, and you kind of do it a lot, and you just try to – make yourself ready each day. Some days you feel better, some days you don't, but you got to try and bring it each day. And that's kind of my focus is to try and be ready to go. Sorry. Each and every day. Sure. So a uh, creature of habit, but not necessarily superstitious like some guys are. Yeah. Not nothing crazy. Like, like I said, I kind of have my routine, so I guess you could call that superstitious, but definitely seen a lot worse. All right. Well, uh, thank you for taking some time to join us here. Best of luck uh, throughout the uh, next portion of the season and uh, hope we get a chance to uh, connect again here before the year is up. No problem. Thanks, Seth. There you have it. Adam Beckman joining us on today's episode of Locked on Wild. Big thanks to him for taking the time to just check in and see how things are going so far this season. We will chat with Mitchell Chafee as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They're your number one source for betting, whether it be on the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NHL season, or college football or basketball. You can find all of the latest player developments, plus biggest game matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every sport out there. And as always, BetOnline.net remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head over to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all that and more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. 
from the biggest games that matter to the biggest stories in the wide world of sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Continuing on today's episode, as we uh, keep an eye on Iowa, and uh, we talked with Adam Beckman. Now we're going to get a chance to chat with Mitchell Chafee about how the season is going so far for him. And joining us now is another member of the Iowa Wild, Mitchell Chafee. Mitchell, thanks for joining me. How's the season going so far? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's going well so far. Um, like in the beginning of the year, it's uh, a lot of guys are kind of up and down and back and forth. So um, it's kind of changed up a little bit, but it's it's been good. Um, our team's kind of starting to uh, pick up in stride. And uh, I think that we got a big weekend this upcoming weekend against um, against Grand Rapids and then game Sunday against Rockford. You know, you look at the start and you've still got, I think, 66 games left to play. And so, you know, it's it's a situation, I'm sure, for you guys not uh, not hitting the panic button too quickly and just trusting that uh, you're going to get to where you want to get to. And by the end of the season, you know, you'll be uh, fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah, I think um, I think as a team, we haven't started off how we wanted to, but I think we've continued to grow and develop each day. Um, I think that we each game that we've gotten better. So that's a good sign. You yourself um, had a chance to get up to the uh, NHL level with the Minnesota Wild last year. First off, what was that experience like for you? I know it's every player's goal to get there, but at this point in your uh, hockey career, what was that like to be able to uh, to get up and play with the Wild? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's something you dream of um, growing up as a kid, but it was, it was amazing. It was a good opportunity and Everyone there um, kind of welcomed me with open arms, and it was a pretty easy jump. So, how much did that help fuel you, as if as if you needed any more motivation to be playing hockey? But how much did that fuel you going into this season, saying, "Hey, I've had a chance to get up there, see kind of what it takes to play at that level," uh, and then allowing you the opportunity to just build to that point? Yeah, like you said, you get a little taste of it, and you want to be back right away. So, I mean. Um, I'm going to do what I, what I can down here to try and get back up to the big club. Getting a chance to, uh, to play under Tim army once again. Uh, what, what do you like about his style as a coach and what he is able to, uh, to do to get you guys ready to play every night? Yeah, it brings a lot of energy each day. Um, whether it's practice or a game, uh, you know what to expect from him and he knows, uh, he kind of pushes you each and every day. So it's good. Um, everyone has a pretty good connection with them. So it makes it easy to kind of know where you stand and, and what he expects of you. I asked this to Adam, and I'm curious to get your response to it as well. You know, going into the season, are you somebody who has like set goals that you want to achieve every year? Or is it more so you kind of during the season just take some time to evaluate where you're at and if you're going in the direction you want to be going? Yeah, I think uh, I sit down before the year and I kind of lay out some some bigger goals that I have for myself for the season in mm-hmm. all. And then I kind of uh, work on those, work toward those goals with kind of a little smaller goals that um, I can do each day or by week that I can kind of track through then. So um, like you said, I've I kind of set some bigger goals and then I make some little ones around it. But that's kind of how I've been doing for the past however many years of playing hockey and that's always worked for me. So sure. Um, with where I was at in the season, you know, what do you feel like are the things that the team is, is doing well so far? Uh, or is it at this point still just mostly trying to kind of get everybody to, uh, to gel the right way? Yeah, I think everyone needs to gel the right way, but, um, I mean, with our start and everything, I think a big, a big aspect in our game that we need to improve upon is playing the power play and penalty kill. Um, I think we can be better on our special teams. And I know, including myself, that um, it's kind of bearing down and scoring goals. So I think that's a big opportunity that um, guys like me can step up in. You had a chance over the uh, the off season to hang out with uh, one of your former teammates, Kale McCarr, with the uh, the Stanley Cup trophy, which I'm sure was an absolute blast. Yeah. Um, how happy were you for him to be able to uh, to get that opportunity? And just what was the experience like being 
in the presence of the thing that everybody is chasing every single season. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, it was a, I was so happy for him. I think he called me uh, that night that he actually won it, and I wasn't even – I was sleeping. I went to bed too early right after, so – he called me with the cup and I missed it. So I think uh, he was pretty upset with me about that. But no, I ended up uh, getting to see it in person this summer and it was unbelievable. I mean, he's such a good guy. We keep in touch all the time. So um, I was just so happy for him. I mean, he, he deserves it. And he's gotten to a point in his career too, where he continues to get better each year. And that's just how he is. And uh, being able to hang out and not only be, have the cup there, but be out in, uh, in King Calgary and hang out with him was just an unbelievable experience. Well, it looked like you guys had, at least by the the pictures on Instagram, you had a, quite a few teammates that were able to get together, which I'm sure is something you guys maybe don't get the chance to do all that often. Yeah, we actually had, uh, it was a group of his guy, uh, his friends from back home that I was with. So it was really, it was really cool. We ended up going out to um, his cabin and uh, we ended up just kind of taking the weekend and hanging out with him and a few of his uh, friends from home and family and stuff. So it was a unbelievable weekend um, out in Calgary. And uh, he's always welcoming me back. So it was a good little golf boys trip. There we go. Um, just a couple of fun ones to close. Who is amongst the uh, the Iowa Wild roster right now? Who's the Who's the prankster? Who's the clown that tries to kind of just keep everything light and try to keep everybody uh, loose as the season goes on. Yeah. Um, I think Joseph Cramarosa does a good job of cracking jokes. Uh, I think Joe Hicketts as well. Uh, it keeps it light. So it's good. I mean, we have a really good group of guys down here and uh, it's, and they make it fun to come to the rink every day. And especially with their, their uh, jokes and attitude around the rink, it, it makes it for a good time. Awesome. Um, which teammates got the best style, best fashion sense? <laughs> um, you know, I'm not sure. Not a lot of guys take uh, take it too seriously, but I think actually uh, Nick Patan has some good okay. style. So I think he's kind of taking the reins there for for best style on the team this year. I will say just for the record that uh, that those are the same answers that Beckman had. So really, yeah, <laughs> the same seems, ones. <laughs> seems like uh, everybody is pretty set on who those guys are, which is great. yeah, yeah. And then just finally, you know, when you're not getting ready for the season, when you're just enjoying that off season time, where can people find Mitchell Chafe? What are you doing to uh, just enjoy your uh, your relaxation time? Yeah, I mean, I guess when I'm relaxing and have like a weekend off, I usually go to uh, northern Michigan or back to Grand Rapids or so and uh, usually spend a lot of time out on the lake or a golf course. And I love mountain biking, just getting out, fishing, all that stuff. Um, do like a lot of uh, like wake surfing and stuff like that in the summer. So it's a, it's a good time to kind of get away from it and uh, enjoy your time on the lake with some unbelievable weather. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you for taking the time to uh, to join us. Best of luck as the season unfolds, and I uh, hope we get a chance to do this again down the road. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Seth. There you have it. Mitchell Chafee joining us for today's episode of Locked on Wild. And again, we're going to keep this keeping an eye on Iowa series going throughout the season. So we'll talk to players. We'll uh, We'll talk to those that cover the team, such as Spoke Z, on next week's edition of Keeping an Eye on Iowa. So I uh, hope you enjoy, and uh, we will continue that here throughout the rest of the season. We'll wrap up with some thoughts on the Iowa Wild so far, because they had a game today. And uh, we'll talk about that and more as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, make sure that for your second listen of the day, you check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. All the biggest news, all the biggest games, all the biggest takes from our local Locked On insiders on the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Early game for the Iowa Wild here today, which is uh, just fine because uh, the Minnesota Wild play against the Seattle Kraken tonight. And uh, if you look at 
how things played out. Uh, the Iowa Wild took on Grand Rapids today and uh, came away with a nice 6-3 to three win. It was Zane McIntyre in net. And uh, McIntyre now has made uh, has played in five games of the seven so far and uh, is two and three on the season. 2.91 goals against average, a 901 save percentage. Jesper Volstead has played in two games so far and is 00 and two. Uh, he was scratched over the weekend. And so uh, McIntyre getting the start here today to uh, allow for Volstead to uh, to get back up to speed. And so uh, the Wilds getting some goals from Mitchell Chafee, who we just talked to, also getting a goal from uh, Adam Beckman. But uh, Ty Roning with the hat trick in this one today as uh, the Iowa Wild picked up their second win of the season. And uh, we discussed it a little bit as to what is coming up for this Iowa Wild team. Uh, you've got a game tomorrow night against Grand Rapids. And then on Sunday, the Rockford Ice Hogs starts a little bit of a road swing for the Iowa Wild as they'll play Sunday at Rockford, then Friday at the Milwaukee Admirals, and Saturday at uh, one of their big rivals, the Chicago Wolves. So Iowa starting to get round into form. And uh, if you look statistically at some of the leaders, from this team so far. Uh, Off-season signing, Sammy Walker with seven points so far, four goals, three assists. Adam Beckman picking up a, a goal here today as well. He's now got three goals in seven games. Ty Roning with three. Nick Sweeney with three goals. Then you have uh, Stephen Fogarty, who was called up. Mitchell Chafee picking up his first goal of the season. Joseph Cramrosa has a goal as well. And Simon Johansson with a goal also. And uh, you look at some of the other names. Uh, Wild fans will be familiar with Dakota Mermis getting up to speed after being on injured reserve for the uh, early part of the season. And uh, Nick Patan as well, who was uh, mentioned. So looks like the Iowa Wild are starting to get back to the level that they uh, are hoping to play at for the uh, entirety of the season. And uh, I don't think it's any reason to need to panic uh, or or be concerned with uh, with Volstead being scratched over the weekend. I'm I'm sure team just trying to you know if it's an injury situation. I was trying to look to see. It didn't see anything in regards to injury or what the reasoning was, but whatever it was, team just being cautious. So uh, look forward to seeing uh, how he does with a few more starts at the Iowa level here over the, uh, hopefully the next couple of weeks. So uh, an Iowa wild team that certainly has uh, plenty of players that uh, should draw your interest as the season goes on. And uh, there are the guys that we saw all the way through the preseason, you know, Andre Schuster, he's got two points in four games and uh, some of the other players who will be, Hopefully household names uh, at some point down the line. Damian Giroux, Damon Hunt, Sam Henches, uh, names like that who uh, are also contributing to this mix as well. So uh, a lot to lot to like about today's game uh, for the Iowa Wild, and we'll see if they can uh, keep it rolling here over the uh, the weekend with a big one coming up. That is going to do it for today's special episode of Locked on Wilds, keeping an eye on Iowa. And uh, now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the entirety of the sporting world. And uh, Locked on Sports Today is available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Just like Locked on Wilds, make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast platforms. You can uh, find us on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on videos discussing the Iowa Wild or the Minnesota Wild as well. And uh, you can find us with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.